Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good whatever time of day it is when you are watching this or whatever geography you are in. Welcome to the July edition of the Singularity Net Insiders, Ecosystem Leaders and Pod Leaders Meeting and Update. We've had a spectacular few weeks since we last did our last recorded pod meeting and I'm really excited by all of the Singularity Net initiatives which are reaching boiling point and are either just being launched, which Jasmine's going to talk, talk us through on Rejuve, and which we're going to, Diane and Danny, we've got here to meet you, will talk us through on Jam Galaxy, on the brink of being launched with Mindflex. And we're seeing some really positive updates coming out of our powerhouse core AI and AGI engines. So looking forward to hearing Matt's perspective, Alexei's perspective, and we're going to kick it off with the marketing team today because marketing team is on fire. We've had a um, super new hire recently with Mihai, who's just been knocking it out of the park and marketing team have been producing huge amounts of materials for you in the community, which I hope you are enjoying. I hope it's hitting the mark. As always, please give us any feedback if there's anything you'd like us to to do differently, more, less, uh, whatever, startup. Now, it's only a few short weeks since our last recorded pod update. And so this is going to be the summer update. And effectively, we're going to take a hiatus for, for August and we'll be back in September with lots more exciting news. So Jan is co-hosting with me as usual. And uh, we're going to kick off with an update from Hayley and Peter, our interim heads of marketing at Singularity Net, who are doing a simply amazing job. Over to you guys. Thank you very much, Janet. Yeah, it's been a, a really exciting month. It's been a, a number of exciting months um, with the, the recent product and upcoming product launches, of course. Um, with market conditions being what they are, we've actually put a lot of focus on um, how do we bring Singularity Net to the, the more mainstream media and, as well as the crypto media just to show the world that's looking for something new, what a high quality and uh, long term value project Singularity Net is. So um, we've had a lot of news recently, actually, with Singularity Net in the, the media that's been uh, right up that alley. We, of course, had the BitBoy crypto interview that just came out this weekend um, with BitBoy and, and Desi from Jan Galaxy. And that was fantastic. It's had so many views already. And, and of course, he has a, a, a nice big audience. So that was exciting to see the, the chemistry and the fireworks between those two and, and that uh, support and the uh, booing of the project. Um, ben just had a, a, an article in Cointelegraph talking about how AI is one of the necessary components of, of metaverse. Uh, of course, AI and metaverse and AI and blockchain, you know, without the, the, the intelligence behind um, those types of initiatives, they just don't work. They don't work well. You know, you, you need that AI to make those platforms seamless and uh, give them their full potential. So that's exciting as well. And then probably the biggest news is the Singularius um, uh, mention in the Euro news. So our new partnership, Singularius, between Singularity Net and Arius Holdings, um, looking to make a conscious city in the Middle East. And we have the real estate and, and everything official and uh, everything over there. Conscious City is going to be an amazing initiative. So um, I'll leave that to somebody who's more involved in the project to talk about the details. But far beyond a city that's just smart, we want a city that's able to be responsive, be intelligent, be understanding of the citizens that it's serving rather than just... Uh, series smart we want something more so making sure that that news gets out i hope everybody gets a chance to read uh all those articles and and share them and spread them and let your whole network know all the exciting things going on in, in singularity net um with Reju, uh launching the closed beta that's obviously been a huge opportunity as well uh, mindplex is getting ready to launch the magazine jam galaxy had its debut performances uh, as well as the BitBoy crypto interview and and others other, other appearances and 
these also are opportunities for Singularity Net to bring the, the message of AGI and, and benevolent AGI to all these different spaces that um, aren't traditional necessarily crypto spaces, but people people who want the new, who want the future, who want that beautiful, beneficial AI um, impact in their lives, they get to hear about this project through all those venues. So we're trying to make sure that that gets maximized. Um, and then uh, upcoming in August, we're going to have the AGI 22 conference, the, the premiere, the oldest AGI conference that there is, <laughs> you know, first put on by, by Ben and colleagues. Um, 15 years ago now, I believe. So uh, very exciting, longest ongoing AGI, first like, on, uh, first AGI conference. And it'll have a, a great lineup. And of course, it'll stream uh, free again, like last year. So everybody gets to participate in the, the cutting edge research there. So um, we're in the midst of um, the website rebrand, relaunch, and um, getting a whole new look and feel to really show and show off the amazing technologies, the amazing ecosystem, and everything that's been new about uh, uh, Singularity Net since phase two, and, and how we've really grown and matured and become a, a central space for decentralized AI. And then some of our most exciting initiatives in the community recently, uh, Peter can talk about our ambassador program and our upcoming staking and loyalty rewards programs. Most definitely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, ambassador program has been going for about uh, two months now and it's been great fun actually. Uh, we've held nine tunnel meetings so far and uh, we also do um, regular work sessions uh, during weekdays. The tunnels average about 10 to 20 people um, live. Um, yeah, the views are 150-ish, so yeah, it's pretty good. Um, all the recordings can, of course, be found on uh, on YouTube. Um, right now, there's two active work groups. One is um, really laying the foundation for the program itself, and the other one is um, focused on getting the community podcast going. That's shaping up more and more. It's still in the beginning, but um, yeah, that's also great fun. So. Um, generally speaking, we're very open to more joiners. So if you're inspired to um, help out and you want to contribute, you can. Uh, we've got a, a GitBook page explaining everything, all the background information you can find there. Um, there's a DWork page, which is like a Web3 Trello board where you can see open tasks, uh, which you can apply for. And um, the meetings are always taking place on Discord, so do hop over to the Singularity Net Discord server if you if you want to join. And I'd like to give a special shout out to uh, Catalyst Swarm because um, yeah, they're they're been really supportive uh, of the ambassador program, and it's very inspiring to see what they already have done, and it really saves uh, reinventing the wheel uh, multiple times over already, and I'm sure in the future. Uh, even more it's yeah amazing to see how they're really focused on cross-pollination and, and collaboration between the two communities and in that light they also have a, a fund nine proposal actually for catalyst so do take a look there if you uh, if you would like to support them and yeah on the staking and loyalty reward program um the details are not fully fleshed out yet uh, i think well, for sure, it's going to be this month. Um, should be one or two weeks. Uh, you're going to be a little more, a little bit more patient, but uh, more information is coming very soon on that. Thanks, Peter. And I think it's worth saying with the loyalty reward, it's not that we're ignoring it, and it's not that we're um, not forthcoming. It's that we we are being very, very thoughtful as to how to make sure that we are being true to the both the spirit and the letter of the phase two proposal that we are able to reward loyalty as best we can within the constraints of, of uh, the complexity, the data that's available, uh, the time that's available. And we really want to ensure that we are really rewarding our loyalist um, token holders and our, our loyalist community in the very, very best way we possibly can. So I know that's something that everyone's really excited by. And as Peter says, we should have details of that out in the next one to two weeks. 
So thanks so much for that, Peter. Thanks also for the update that went out on Friday on the uh, June update around the ecosystem and the operations update is just waiting a final uh, little tweak and that will be out as well, hopefully today. So fantastic work through. And also want to give a big shout out to Mihai on the marketing team for all the work he's been doing, particularly, I mean, uh, right across the board, but particularly super support on Jam Galaxy, which has been a very big, big month for Jam Galaxy. And, and Mahai's been working all the weekends and all through its holidays and all the evenings. He's been like the uh, the fourth emergency support for us. Anytime we needed him, uh, Mahai was there and, and uh, there's been huge amounts of activity. I'd also say just to, to follow on from the BitBoy crypto interview, there are actually two YouTubes out there from BitBoy. Uh, so please do make sure you see them both community. Currently sitting at over 30,000 views between the two videos. And it was a really, really fun interview. The chemistry was great. We loved meeting BitBoy and his team. He had Holly and Aaron with him. So thank you, Holly. Thank you, Aaron, for uh, for your work on, on sound and video and for just really being great to hang out with for a couple of hours. Uh, I enjoyed it, Ben enjoyed it. And I think Desi really enjoyed it uh, most of all. There was definitely some sparks going on there between BitBoy and Desi. So we know you're happily married, uh, BitBoy Ben, <laughs> so we're not suggesting there was anything untoward going on. But uh, some super sparks and, and big thanks also to Andres Suarez, our um, amazing head of AI dialogue system and robotics for Awakening Health, who was supporting that interview as well. Right, so uh, we'll, we'll cover, I think, Singularis and the partnerships under our partnerships update. And um, I think we should move seamlessly on to Greg on UX, UI, and the website redesign and refresh, which is uh, getting very close to launch time. Yeah, uh, thank you, Janet. Uh, yeah, so head of UX here, uh, I have a few updates on the design team. So today I just we had two roles open over the past uh, month and we filled both. Uh, we have one designer for Singularity Net who's onboarded and doing very well. And we also just onboarded uh, another designer today for Singularity DAO. So all the team at Singularity DAO is super excited about the new designer and we have a lot of uh, great hope for her to you know blend and merge with the team very well. So everybody's pretty excited about that. Uh, as far as, uh, yeah, I'll go right back into the Singularity uh, Net website redesign. <clears throat> so yeah, that's going pretty well. We uh, finished some design of some new modules um, here and there. So we're pretty much complete on all the module design and we're pretty much just focusing on creative visuals that are in production. And we're working with some great designers over at Singularity Dollars helping out with that. Um, the big thing, uh, development has begun. It's been going on for the past couple of weeks. Uh, and I've been doing updates with the developer. And we also have, uh, we'll pretty much be doing design QA for the website uh, beginning in, in a week. So that's a good step getting to the sandbox and then uh, building out. Now, keep in mind the website is like, it's not just a redesign. We're kind of making everything more efficient, smoother so that we can communicate and have our pages update faster for our community, uh, especially things like the roadmap or other things in the ecosystem and the news and all that stuff. So it's getting a huge overhaul. It's gonna be a nice, it'll be a very team collaborative effort to like keep it updated, but it'll be a lot easier. So that's that's the good part of the website. And it'll be pretty, pretty cool, I think. I think you guys will like it. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, and marketing is obviously, as you heard, is uh, working on the content production, uh, producing, and they're working through that and that's going fairly well. Uh, so the other thing I want to roll back to is uh, uh, for the platform on the UX for platform, we uh, finished the loyalty rewards airdrop design, uh, pending a tech review and development's already begun. Uh, obviously there's some mention about some aspects of that, but uh, yeah, we designed, finished the design for that, which is pretty, pretty good. We've obviously made some improvements uh, to the airdrop systems that we've been doing. So this, the new loyalty rewards is going to be pretty epic and smooth and be able to scale throughout the, the lifetime of it, which is a while. So that's pretty good that we got that kind of settled. Another thing on the platform is we'll be kicking off the AI training with Rom's team. 
and the Cardano UI upgrades to the AI marketplace and the AI publisher. So we'll be getting deep into that. And, my, and the AI training uh, features is going to be, it's going to probably take a while, but uh, we're going to get through the hard parts of that. Uh, so moving on to like other UX design stuff, Rejuve Longevity app is the closed betas out, launch many users have downloaded the app and using it, which is great, great news for the UX team. That means we got a lot of uh, bugs and, you know, feature enhancements that we need to start focusing on. So we're working on QAing the design for that. And right now I'm working on the, the data submit ID verification and also the health data NFT flows. So hopefully we'll get some cool flow designs for that app um, and make it even better uh, for the closed beta and hopefully get to that, you know, launch point. Uh, Mindplex on that side, uh, production design. We finished the production design for responsive designs, which are almost complete. So that's pretty good. Uh, I'm sure the Mindplex team will give further updates on where they're at with their platform. And that's about it. Other than uh, I've been doing a lot of R&D stuff on other things that I'm not really supposed to talk about, I don't think yet, but uh, we'll reveal more maybe in the next next you know, update like this. But other than that, that's it from the UX team. And thank you for listening and checking this out. Fantastic. Thank you, Greg. And it's really eye opener and really great that you had an opportunity to share with everybody just how UX UI is instrumental in the success of all of our projects right across Singularity F and the ecosystem. And congratulations on your new hires. Um, so great to see you. If you need to shoot off, I know it's very, very late. What time is it for you now? Uh, it's 11.30. 11.30 yeah. p.m. So you're very, uh, you're very, you're, it's very good of you to be here. Thank you so much indeed. Thanks, Greg. So um, we're going to move from there on to, I think, the uh, woman of the moment. Funny how woman of the moment doesn't roll off the tongue like man at the moment. Anyway, the woman of the moment, woman of the hour, Jasmine, is going to tell us all about the Rejuve Longevity app launch and some of the incredible feedback she's been getting. Jasmine. Hello, hello. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it's been uh, really awesome. We've had um, a super great response uh, after our closed beta launch. We had um, over 800 signups and so far, um, around 277 downloads. So actually we're uh, hoping to get that number up. We're hoping that everyone that did sign up uh, does actually come on board and, and create an account. So we did just uh, send out a reminder email to um, activate that. And if anyone is having any trouble with installation or you need a new invite sent or never got the email or anything of that nature, you can uh, contact us on our social media channels or Telegram would be the best one or even uh, email on our uh, contact page. And also pretty interestingly, because uh, there was a question on the form about um, what, if you're a medical professional or other professionals that are involved in getting uh, more involved with Rejuve. And we have a super talented community that's including um, doctors and various medical professionals, uh, professionals teachers, students, um, AI engineers, UX, UI professionals, and actual uh, professional beta testers. So uh, quite a, a talented and varietous uh, crowd so that is uh, super exciting and we do hope that we can actually engage all of those people um, into their different areas to help uh, kind of build this decentralized ecosystem that we're making um yeah there's been uh, really great uh comments on social media uh we might actually you know feature a few of them but um yeah just uh, really happy that everyone is liking this and we just have uh, so much further and more to go um we will soon be having a town hall style meeting um, all about the app beta. So we'll be um, announcing that soon. It'll be on Discord. So you'll get to kind of uh, come in and chat with us uh, about upcoming features or how your experience has been so far. And yeah, it's just super exciting time because this is uh, basically the bear market is working for us um, because we're having the product and, and platform and hopefully even you know the utility before the token is even here you know, versus the opposite way, which usually goes along in crypto where you have the token and you're waiting on a product, we're going to be in the other order. So pretty exciting times. And yeah, the, the building just continues and everybody that's uh, in the beta testers program will get to uh, see those new features uh, loaded in live as they come along. 
and uh, for continuing involvement. Yeah, if there's any um, potential partners, collaborators, or you know, you know any leads that uh, may want to work with us in a deeper way, we will um, continue to uh, send out more invites if needed. So, uh, yeah. Fantastic, thank you, Jasmine. Tell us, would you please read out my favorite tweet about uh, your favorite piece of feedback about the app? You shared it on one of the Slack channels this morning or over the weekend. Oh, the one that I shared? Yeah, the one that said this app is better than 99% of the apps on my phone. Yeah. Um, did you want to actually like to bring it up or just read it? No, or? that's fine. Oh, yeah, bring it up, bring it up. Go on, bring it up. Why not? Yeah, Rejuve.ai longevity app beta is already better than 99% of the apps I have on my phone. Looking forward to watching it evolve and being a part of the process. Yeah, and they uh, had six years younger than their chronological age. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah, Thank that's, that's so only, uh, yeah, only one of them. So we saw like quite a few uh, cool things and lots of positive feedback. So yeah, we're pretty excited and happy about that. Oh, well, big, big thanks to CNFT Diziac for tweeting that. Uh, keep them coming and community, please RTQT, like and uh, show your love for the Rejuve app and all the really, really hard work that has gone into that. So, so thanks very much indeed, Jasmine. Right, so where are we going next? Yeah, in our tour of the amazing, talented uh, Singularity Net ecosystem. Well, I think it would be a good choice to go from Rejuve to that other big prospect of ours, which is uh, Mindplex. Uh, either Rui or Connor, I think, are present. I am, um, yeah. I think uh, Rui has fantastic English, but he doesn't like speaking it in, in public. <laughs> um, yeah, my hand. You, on the other hand, have no problem with that, so... Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Um, yeah, Mindplex is getting almost ready to launch um, our futuristic tech magazine. Uh, we will roll out our, our software and our attack on the media environment, our transformation of media in phases, starting with a with a magazine uh, in the traditional sense, well, an online magazine about the future, about uh, artificial intelligence, genetics, robots, spaceships, lasers, and all that good stuff. And um, that will have certain of our AI features deployed. And then as um, we build up the audience and build up the readership, build up the community, uh, we will roll out more um, more software tools to allow it to become more decentralized, less of a magazine, more of a platform. Um, so we are starting with a little bit of user-generated content, but it's also a lot of our friends in in um, the singularitarian community and the futuristic media who are writing articles for us, a uh, few pieces of video content and interactive content, as well as articles. Um, but yeah, this I'm, I'm excited to launch this magazine as soon as possible, sometime in July 22. And um, we've got a great set of content lined up. And then, yeah, hopefully you guys will all come read it and suggest more stories for us and we can start rolling out more and more uh, user generated content and build up a build up a community around it. Um, we have uh, the web design we have uh, the problem is we have two web designs completed instead of just one so we need to narrow it down to one. Um, we have the content uh, almost ready the, in terms of software tools we have the reputation engine, the um, reputation engine and the uh, recommendation engine are pretty much complete. So uh, we're, we're firing on all cylinders in terms of, of software and um, yeah, just finalizing our growth hacking strategies, how we can, um, it's an interesting challenge of when you have a, 
something like a media platform that requires other users in order to be useful, how do you bootstrap the first thousand users? Because it's no fun to be on a platform if you're the only guy there. So we're um, we're using the magazine to draw in the initial community of like-minded, uh, future-minded people, and um, yeah, then then we'll have more and more tools to allow you guys to talk to each other. Thanks, Connor. Anything to tell us about the podcast? About the podcast? Uh, well, we have a podcast with Ben Gertzel, um that has. Uh, have we recorded two episodes or three now? Um, and we are editing them, so we will launch hopefully with the first episode and then keep rolling out episodes of our podcast where Ben talks to robots and humans. Um, uh, we have three recorded so far. Um, um, yeah, talking to different people, different thinkers in the space about... Um, about you know where where the human race is going in these singularity adjacent times we'll have a few podcast episodes ready and loaded into the barrel when we launch the website and then uh i think the release schedule will be one per week all right amazing thank you and i was lucky enough to be at the first one which was at uh, huge amounts of fun and um, so really looking forward to publishing those. Hrui, we see you there looking very bright. Um, anything, Hrui of course is CEO and and uh, holds the vision of Mindplex close to his heart. Anything to add to what Connor has just said, Hrui? Any calls out uh, to the community? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we're thinking that the community can also uh, give us a pilot or sample of the community podcast because Connor and I we have been discussing about this back and forth and we think that we can have uh, another section like voice of the community or something because after all we're trying to come up with a platform that will give equal opportunity to our community to the users everybody so in addition to our own podcast we we look forward to have samples or pilots from our community and the door is open if our community have such a podcast. We will welcome it. This is the this is the thing I want to say to our community. Fantastic! So keep the ideas coming, and we will turn them turn those dreams into reality together. Thank you so much, Rui. Congratulations to you both on all of the um, tremendous work that I know is going into that Mindplex launch. And as Connor says, it is absolutely imminent. Any day now, uh, certainly during July, we're going to see this this brilliant magazine launched. And we have such a, a strong editorial team there with Amara, Angelica, Lisa Ryan, and we've had amazing uh, contributions and, and some, some fantastic authors. So uh, really excited about the launch. Great, great job. Thank you so much indeed. Right, are we heading to Kabira next? How are you doing, Kabir? What all is going on? Brilliant stuff in Unix. Tell us all about it. Uh, we will. So, hello. Uh, it's kind of difficult for me to keep track of everything that's going on. So, apologize if I miss something because I don't even remember when the, the, the last one was recorded. Uh, yeah, so first we are basically continuing building the team and I think right now we can say that we are 20, 20 people strong and, and continuing with the hiring, uh, we sort of I think the feeling is that we pretty much managed to find the way we are organizing the team because when, when, when the team grows a little bit bigger is a coordination between the, the team members and between the sub teams let's say becomes most important and also the, the building up the development flow it seems to be working pretty well i'm really happy to see how the 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 the, the, and the coordination happens and we are building the tools as we go in order for this coordination to kind of to uh, yeah to support it 
and also uh, coordination between the team members inside and also with the community developers. So the, I think the main thing that happened, if we can kind of single out the main thing, is that we launched the testers program last a couple of weeks ago, I don't even remember when. And that testers program, we basically invited people to to uh, to join or to to sort of apply for the for the testers program means uh, people who have free resources to join Lunat network and to help us to test it. Uh, in terms of, in this case, for for the from the compute devices perspective, so that we can have more direct communication with the more, let's say, technical skilled people who can help us to adjust and to synchronize the platform and the features for the devices which are sourced from basically from different different places. And that was pretty successful. We got 1.6 thousand applications. Now I think the marketing team uh, filtered that filter that and there were quite a few bots and i think we have we have something like few few nice hundreds of of, of applications that we will uh, we will uh, consider individually and it's quite above expectations and now we are thinking how are we going to sort of enable all this community to to join on it and to build in the, the testing network and of course, uh, the, the next step is how do we build the uh, production or mainnet on the net so that we can enable things that are, will be tested on the on the test network on the on the production network to for the yeah for the use cases the actual use cases with with uh, token usage to to be used. At. So that's that's the um, sort of well, let's say the biggest step seems to be so far uh, or let's say as, as an update then uh, we basically just continuing developing the use cases or the platform through the use cases so we have basically four use cases um, uh, formulated which is cardano spo uh, computing then um, enabling gpu computing i mean machine learning through G gpu which basically from the nunat perspective is just allowing people to onboard the gpus on nunat and we are looking forward to 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 sort of uh, put that into the next phase where we'll be building gpu virtual gpu clusters on nunat so that's pretty exciting perspective I mean, uh, potential to enable people, the uh, community hardware, of GPU hardware, to power uh, machine learning models. And then we will uh, uh, invite community and also ecosystem members to figure out or to propose and to sort of collaborate in, uh, in kind of parallel, making all those workflows parallelized and the distributed framework or decentralized framework it, which is another let's say uh, layer of complexity in the in the ecosystem uh, in order to support all this mostly 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 internal collaboration and external cooperation so as i said we are building the tools for that which is now and we are kind of trying to make it as transparent as possible. It seems that we are pretty successful in that. So all the development processes is basically open and public. And we are publishing most of our, I mean, uh, the, the discussions so that community members and also newcomers and ecosystem members could just jump in and, and check them out and see what's going, what, what's going on and also participate in the development itself. Uh, the, the thing that is now what's, what's coming is that we are also building a new or facelift of the of the of the website which is not exactly facelift it's more rebuilding it as a, as an informational hub something that greg i think also mentioned uh, as, a, as a idea to build uh, for the singular net uh, website update 
if that could be called update is that what we want to do we want to build this informational hub which connects all the like sources of information or platforms that we're using both kind of externally or basically internally which are shared with the community and uh, so the idea that we will have i mean the, the website itself will be a kind of uh, a hub which will connect external um, frameworks let's say also uh, content on medium our development all the development updates on let's say github uh, what else we have uh, yeah developers exchange and all kind of uh, yeah all kind of content that we have including certain um, uh, well all kind of readmes and documentations on let's say github or whatever we found uh, not github but uh, gitbook or whatever we find best for certain content yeah to publish certain content so we are sort of building this informational infrastructure and structure and also we are looking for this website or the informational hub to be so flexible and adjustable to all the changes that are happening within the within the I mean within Luna. Uh, so for most many of those things, we're looking to October as a kind of a time when we will do the major updates of, and we are sort of scheduling all the major updates, both in terms of marketing and communication and in terms of technical development. Uh, we will be participating in the Rare Bloom event of, of, uh, in the US in the uh, middle of October. Uh, yes, so what else we have? We have set uh, period address. That's a lot. I think that's, I think that's the last time. You mean I, 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 have to, I have to finish? Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you, you've, got one more, you've got one more minute. We've got, we've got a lot more updates to go to. All right, so this, I think this, I will very just... inspiring. I think I will just wrap it up uh, in, term, in, in, in more general. Where we are going is that we are building sort of transport system in order for ecosystem members and the community members to directly connect to exactly what we are doing and to sort of offer the motivation and knowledge and skills to keep, keep, keep the ecosystem going. So what we want to do with all these sort of aspects is to exactly that sort of to leverage the, the knowledge and intelligence and motivations of, of, of all the both ex sort of internal and external community. I'm not even sure whether this one sort of uh, definition, this distinction is correct. Yeah, so we are building the, the fundamentals in order to allow each each spin-off well, in an ecosystem to find out what Moonet can help them with Rejuve, Mindplex, uh, and, and, and Singularity Net. So yeah, but, I think we're, but, on, we're well on, on, on the path. Yeah. It, it, rubber is absolutely hitting the road, Kabir, and I get a great, great sense of um, the vision be, be really becoming reality and having become a reality with distributed GPU computing with use cases, actual real use cases being uh, developed and team in place, community engagement strong. Uh, amazing work for you. I have one question. When are you going to have AI on the Singularity Net marketplace and platform that will encourage utilization of the AGIX token? Well, I can again what, what I said about October. This this we would like to see in October where we are. This uh, the the way we basically do everything is relate these platform features to the use case integrations, and we try not to do platform features just separately from the from the specific use case integrations that we have. So it's going along. 
However, it depends on how these use case integrations kind of get uh, get developed. Not right. a very concrete answer, right? Not very concrete, but we'll we'll uh, next next recorded pod session in September. Maybe you could do a, a little more of a deep dive into specifically how that AI is coming along and when we're going to see it on the platform. So, Please. if I if I may specify, if I have a few seconds, is yeah, we had. Uh, what Nunat is doing, Nunat is not, well, what he's doing, is doing pl platform, uh, so protocols and APIs in order for anything that is com compute, computable to run on Nunat, and, well, to run through Nunat on community infrastructure. In order for those features to be useful for people, let's say, we need to have uh, engagement of the ecosystem members who build those use cases and business models. And the, 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 the sort of bigger or more kind of intense this collaboration, the faster we go. That would be kind of less in concrete answer, I, I hope. <laughs> Alrighty, let's have lots of integration then. Thank you. Uh, right, so so thank you so much for that update. We are always yeah. brilliant and brilliant to have you here. Thank you. Next, we are going to Cloris. Cloris, did you give an update at the last recorded uh, part? Did. Oh, you did. So it's your I, second. I think I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yeah. Well, anyway, fabulous, fabulous to have you here. Thanks, Cloris. I know you're um, making huge progress very, very fast with. Uh, Cogito, Cogito, uh, tell us what you've been up to, please. Okay, sure. Thank you, Janet. So, yeah, we made very good progress on Cogito. So, I think uh, in the last recording or in the previous update, we promised to have our white paper ready in Q2. Well, we have got it done already. Now it's only like early of July. So, that's pretty good. And uh, if it, I mean, uh, the white paper right now is only available to the core team, but I uh, I have talked with the marketing team. I think we'll have a summary report, which will be released to the community very soon. So that, you know, the community will be able to know what's happening and what we are doing, et cetera, et cetera. And we also have get our website done, which is also super amazing, you know, considering how limited resources we have right now on the team. And we are definitely making full use of everyone's time and talent at this moment. So that's like uh, two main uh, achievements that we have done in the uh, since last recording. And there are a lot of things going on with marketing as well. So uh, I just mentioned about the uh, report that we are doing with marketing. So uh, we should have like an update or maybe in in uh, in social media to to summarize um, everything with the uh, community very soon. And also we will have a, third, a call with our partner, PR agency partner, April 6th, very soon to discuss about the uh, collaborations and stuff. And also we discussed about like how, you know, going forward, Cogito can create synergies with uh, thinking our internet ecosystem, especially, you know, how we can benefit both the Cogito users and investors and uh, thinking our internet investors, right? So. I think that's the whole point that we are doing all these kind of projects uh, together. And also uh, I, uh, our UX UI team have been helping us to have like a design, the logo, which we are also making good progress. I think we are almost there already. Uh, it's been finalized at the moment. And we will also have a podcast with Ben and uh, and the, the robot very soon. So I can, uh, the date is not confirmed yet, but it will happen this month or early next month. So a lot of things going on with marketing. And this marketing preparations will uh, definitely help us to bring the community together to draw attention from the market. And then we'll go to our next big, uh, very big move. We'll go to the investors and then start the fundraising. So that's what's been going on um, in Cogito. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Clara. It's such a pleasure working with you and having you on board. And great to see you in London uh, for your short stay in London. It was super to get you out and, and meet some of the team in the wider Singularity Net London chapter last week. So uh, okay, thanks so much fun. for that. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for a lovely, thank you for a lovely succinct update. Great to see the progress there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you didn't touch on, we've also made a fair bit of progress on the financial modeling and stress testing of the financial modeling and right. building up of 
they index on GitHub. So lots of lots of really strong technical progress as well, underpinning right. the white paper, the website, uh, and oh, all the progress yeah. you're making so, as well. <laughs> yeah, so I was about to skip the technology uh, technical part because it's a bit, uh, you know, too technical. So yes, so we did the uh, index competition, which uh, we have the GitHub already. And also I think the financial modeling is one of the core uh, part of the entire business. So we have doing very intensive financial modeling and all the stress testing and stuff. So we have quite good result, I would say. And the uh, our deadline for finishing this will be within the week. And so far, we already have something drafted up already, which the result turns out to be satisfactory. So yeah, that's something we are definitely focusing on. And we have a team of experts, experts working on that. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you very much indeed. No, I think it's never too technical for a Singularity Net community audience. They 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 like it. They're hardcore our followers. Uh, and they love <laughs> to hear cool. about the technical stuff, especially the AI and the the uh, the modeling that we're doing. Fabulous. Thank you so much, um, Cloris. And we're gonna jump seamlessly over to Desi. Desi's with us. I mean Diane. Uh, Diane is with us today, and Diane's going to introduce us to our amazing Danny, who's our uh, director of artist outreach for Jam Galaxy. So it's been a massive month for Jam Galaxy. La at the last recorded update, well, at th the last recorded update we had launched at Nam, but we haven't done the NYC uh, gig. So uh, tell us a little bit about it, and I might add some thoughts about NFT NYC while we're at it. All right, cool. Well, good morning in here and good afternoon. Good evening everywhere else. Um, I have with me today our VP of Artist Outreach and uh, my partner in crime here in the Jam Galaxy here with us this morning, Danny Newcomb. And he's going to talk with us a little bit about our artist outreach this morning. Um, once I touch a little bit here on our amazing time in New York City um, at DROM. And I just wanted to just thank everybody who was there. I wanted to thank the whole band and then everybody um, that got us to the point um, of this amazing show that we had. Um, I play saxophone, Danny plays guitar. So um, from a stage perspective, it was just an absolutely electric night. Um, Desi was totally on and um, it, it's really fun. Playing with a robot sounds totally weird, but um, the audience reaction was that it was an experience because it's this brand new thing because we, we feed um, prompts into her neural nets and she comes up with this really cool futuristic stuff that she says. And then as a Jam Galaxy band, we're kind of a jam band. So we're just making things up on the fly and we're always in this kind of constant flow improvisational kind of space. And it's so fun. I mean, I just wish we could do it over every single night. Um, but so it was great. And um, yeah, so thanks everybody for uh, your participation and being there to support us. Um, and Janet, did you want to say a few things about New York? Well, 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 well. I mean, New York was just a phenomenal experience. We went to NFT NYC, then did a an inspirational talk in um, in in New York at the conference. He, he was he was uh, spellbinding as always. We met Bitport Crypto, who we we spoke about earlier, and it, really the the. For me, New York had, had a, a few highlights. I met some incredible artists. Uh, one who we're talking with tonight, Artsy. So hi, Artsy. Here's your your shout out. Uh, Artsy is a, a hip hop rapper from Brooklyn who stole the show for me at NFT NYC. I saw about 40 speakers probably at the conference of, of the actual talks and events. And Artsy was by far the most compelling when he talked about how NFTs blockchain have the potential to completely turn the whole artist, the whole music industry upside down on its head yeah. and provide artists with, with an ability to connect with their fans, with authenticity. He, he brought it home to me as well, how through NFTs and, and blockchain, how the relationship between a community and fans and an artist can really mm -hmm. shift into something much, much deeper, which is based around a, a much closer connection, a much more, much stronger give and take between the artist and the fan group, but also how the fans 
in effect by buying NFTs instead of by but instead of in the traditional music model where a, a, an artist buys a a streams a song or in the old days would would buy an album um the the there's no investment there but with it with NFTs by by finding artists who you love by believing in their story that that fans can then actually invest in their artists uh, mm -hmm. via NFTs and by 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 bringing the love and the support that they do to to their artists they actually mm -hmm. becomes a self fulfilling prophecy and can help mm -hmm. that artist to become successful can help the NFTs to to grow in value and um, so that was something that was probably always obvious to other people but for me it was it was beautifully put by by artsy um so so i also at, at nft nyc i would say the messages were pretty consistent across all of the speakers there was nothing really new discussed other than you know nfts for uh, building community and nfts for disintermediation nfts for putting the putting the um the pricing power in the hands of the community and the fans instead of in the hands of a select few record labels or or streaming agents and um, but i think another message that was new to me was the message of authenticity and that in this new world of direct artists and and um fans and community a direct interaction without without needing always to have a little man that that being yourself being authentic about your story is what actually attracts the community as well as the quality of the art um and music itself we also we met and we had an investor symposium brilliantly organized by Bill and Stacy and uh, Bill Inman and, and Stacy Engel and again met some really really incredible high quality people at the investor symposium we went to a, a, a super, very, very glamorous uh, NFT whale party at, at Dream and met some really incredible people there. And one of the huge highlights of New York for me was meeting the supermodel sisters, Carly and Ashley. Carly and Ashley came to our gig and just brightened up our whole event with beautiful photos, bringing glamour and, 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 and a really strong energy, a commitment to positive impact and impacting Jam Galaxy. So huge love to Carly and Ashley, the Supermodel Sisters. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, and I know Desi really enjoyed meeting you as well. She told me afterwards. <laughs> uh, so so, so uh, I, I think probably the final thing I'd say about New York and NFT NYC before we go and talk to Danny about how he's getting on with, with artist outreach. But one of the, we came away extremely positive, didn't we, uh, Diane and Danny? Yeah. There, yeah. there wasn't, there wasn't yeah. a sense of depression and gloom about the market. Um, right. Obviously, yeah. it wasn't. Obviously, it wasn't uh, upbeat as it would be during during the bull market. But so, you know, a strong sense that uh, investors are still interested in finding projects. Yeah. That projects are still moving forward. Uh, a yeah. huge sense of excitement, really, around NFTs and and the NFT movement. Movement. So really, really positive event and, and um, another shout out to a community member who came up to me at the gig and said, are you Janet? And said, I came to this gig because of your last community recorded pod leaders, <laughs> ecosystem leaders meeting, uh, because I, I saw you talking about the gig and that's why I came. So big shout out to you and also shout out to everyone from our partners, potential partners, uh, community, potential investors, all the people who who came to the gig and uh, had an amazing time. Um, so that was New York. Thank you. Yes, Diane. thank you, Janet. Yeah, it, it was a really cool time. And um, yeah, we're really excited here. I, I think um, in this market, this is the time when we're all really building and, you know, all of us in this space are coming together as a team to really start to educate people and really start to build utility and tools and things that are actually going to make a difference in all people's lives you know, now and in the future. So it's a really exciting time. And the part about community and connecting with your artists, I mean, it really opens up a couple dimensions within the space because we're used to kind of a flat space with, you know, streaming services and other music platforms and that, that kind of thing. But what Jam Galaxy and other people in this space bring about is this direct connection and with their artists and they get to be part of their artist teams and a part of their artist success. And, and that's really cool. Um, and then there's just also a time element with history and present and future and everything that we're all building together. So it's 
it's kind of way more than you know all of the nfts it's all this whole community and where we're taking you know the world and artists and people able to connect and and make better lives all over the planet so so it's pretty cool and um we're actually coming up on a, a big um, nft series with some of our early artists and i have danny here this morning to talk a little bit about that and then we also have a concert coming up uh, in august um it's it's at the same location as the agi conference which is really cool so a lot of our agi people will get to see the band and also see some of our early artists Bands, and this is a big benefit for um, an organization called Smash. And Smash provides health services for musicians, um, you know, medical, dental, vision, hearing, everything like that. So it's a really great organization that we love to support. And um, yeah, I'll let Danny take it away. All right, my pleasure to be here. Nice, nice to hear your uh, perspectives on everything, Diane and Janet. Um, New York was great. It was a great experience and a nice way to meet more of, for me, because I come from a musician's background. I'm Danny Newcomb, uh, VP of Artist Relations. Um, this is early for me to be speaking in public, but I'm happy to be here. Um, yeah, New York was great and, and kind of getting a feel for the general, you know, tech community and the NFT community. Um, and yes, I was really struck by people being excited about um, building utility now. Um, and it was much less speculative, but more concerned with, you know, who are you, what are we doing and, and how are we going to change things, you know? So that was very exciting. We are starting with NFTs, uh, sort of as a community outreach and to sort of announce our presence, uh, next month, um, with a jam galaxy NFT of a song, um, that will be a music NFT. It'll be part video as well as uh, a single that has been unreleased. And this is the first segment of our NFT releases will be. Uh, singles, um, unreleased music to artists that are signed to Jam Galaxy. So we're very excited about this. Uh, it's yeah. going to be called the Singles Club and it has nothing to do with your Tinder app. It will just be music. Um, although that might not be a bad idea in general. Um, but we're, mo we're moving forward with uh, uh, figuring out incentives for artists. I come from a music background myself, which I think already um, and I've been coordinating the show in Seattle at the Crocodile because that's the musical base that I know. And I believe that any good story um, needs to have a time and a place to it. And I think having that anchor for the Seattle show and for our first artists um, will help us get local press and national music press to start being um, part of the real world. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that has been so exciting as Diane and I have gotten into this is the amount of utility that we're seeing on the blockchain for artists in terms of smart contracts, uh, negotiating with labels um, and streaming and just direct relationships for artists. Um, the, the feedback I've been getting from artists about this has been pretty amazing. Um, they know that change needs to happen, that things are unsustainable the way they are and they're looking for something, but without doing it like we are as a holistic community-based approach, I think it tends to read as being a scam or something that's inflated, whereas this feels normal and yeah. they're excited about it. So anyways, look forward to giving you future updates and nice to meet you all and talk to you soon. Awesome, thanks so much, Danny, appreciate it. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing, Danny. We're very, very lucky to have you at Singularity.net and Jam Galaxy with your incredible connections with artists and the, the big, big names which you're signing up that I'm sure we're going to be uh, telling people about. Well, very, Mike very McCready soon. of Pearl Jam will be next month. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All righty. Very, very nice. Who were in London, uh, London this week and you very yeah. kindly helped to get us a ticket for one of our um, emerging partners in our partnerships. So uh, that was that was super, super kind of you. Thanks a million for that. He said he had a fantastic gig and of course he had Pearl Jam who who Oh great. Who great. Yeah, 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 he had a he had a fantastic gig. And um I I just thinking of one quote I got at NFT NYC, which is there's no middle class in music that there's only the very, very wealthy and then there's everybody else who can't generally can't make a living out of out of their their art. And mm. it's brilliant that the work we're doing is going to bring that positivity and, and make more diverse voices heard and outlier artists heard and um you know really really provide a platform for fairly dramatic 
um, changes in circumstances for so many super, super, super talented artists. So, and I am very, very privileged to work with you guys. It was, it was, it was as well as being enormous fun um, in New York. Very important point on Jam Galaxy. We have Sergei Shalyapin here. I do know yes. Ser Sergei's, Sergei's going, wait, wait, I'm, I'm hitting on Sergei without warning. So Sergei, <laughs> you don't have to say anything. But in terms of when we're going to have uh, services on the Singularity Net platform, the Jam Galaxy services, the AI tools which we're building for artists, are probably going to be in the front runners of the next uh, major wave of Singularity Net AI services on our decentralized marketplace. So the benefit from Jam Galaxy straight into Singularity Net is very, very, um, is very, very clear and very, very imminent as well. Um, Sergey, anything you want to tell us about the brilliant AI tools you're developing for musicians to put on, on our the... platform? Hello everyone, let me start from uh, what you girls just look perfect today. Oh, <laughs> thanks! That's true, that's true. But I have a very, very long list. Uh, I could start with Jim Galaxy. <laughs> well, you, you, you have to do it in about, you have to do it in about three minutes. Galaxy. Yeah, very interesting stuff from Jim Galaxy is going on. First, uh, I got very deep in the uh, data, data, data collection. We are collecting uh, all the poetry data, all the song lyrics data, we classify it on the genres, uh, and uh, the different types of music. We collect uh, just your music. Uh, we collect music which has sim uh, mixed symbolic and uh, raw representation, which means that we have both notes and the music. Uh, and we have the uh, most massive collection, uh, I guess, uh, right now, of that type of music. So, <clears throat> I just will try to finalize all, the, all, all this uh, down in the data processing. We got a table of many, many pages, uh, just, just to be presented in the channel. Yes, very many sources. That is most time consuming, as a matter of fact, usually. Gathering all the data. In parallel, we try different types of models. For music generation, from raw music generation, for uh, uh, raw to symbolic music generation, which can handle both uh, symbolic and uh, uh, the raw signal representation in, in one model or in, in, in uh, two different encoders, but in the same encoder. So it's just uh, more about controllable music generation, which is most interesting, which is most practical for, for the composers. Uh, which is mm, best to be wrapped in tools. Uh, mm, beyond that, uh, some other stuff, uh, single voice generation, which is could be, in fact, could be uh, more or less controllable. And it's it's a, a really mm, interesting, hard to do, and, and a particular task to, to, to produce a voice which which could be controlled by notes, by pitch, and by some uh, and by text, maybe grounded by text. So, Many many inputs uh, for for the one model, but it's very interesting. I conduct several experiments in different types of textures. I will have the, the first promising results soon. I hope, and uh, some other stuff. Uh, oh, <laughs> what was it? Not some discriminative models, some classification tools, um, and music separation tools, which could be much more advanced than. Uh, we could find uh, an open source right now, uh, in both in terms of uh, model scale and in terms of both, uh, sophisticated architectures. But we try to benefit of both things, of uh, long uh, knowledge of the architectures and both uh, from uh, data, in terms of data. So I'm trying to combine uh, with everything to, uh, to develop beautiful, really beautiful and practical tools. Some, some other minor stuff, but I guess that's enough for two minutes. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sergey. It's, it's brilliant. You're the powerhouse of, of our, certainly Jam Galaxy AI and so much of our di dialogue system and our deep learning. So great to have you here. Is this the first time we've introduced you to the community or you've met the community? No, I was uh, oh, okay. in the previous uh, session, but I was very short out there. Now I've written the list of 10. 10 projects but okay yeah <laughs> fantastic yeah. thank you thank so much, you so much Sergey. we really appreciate all your hard work we just love you so much thank you <laughs> thank you oh we do 
We do, it's true. All right, thank you so much indeed. Right, so I think that covers all of the spin-offs. Now we're gonna get into AI, AGI, OpenCog, Hyperon, and lots of really amazing positive progress being reported by Matt and Alexei and the team. Um, at our last pod meeting, which wasn't recorded, I opened up the pod meeting by asking everybody to give us a score out of 10 as to how they're feeling, what's the sentiment. And we didn't get any scores under eight. They were they range from eight to 10 with an average sentiment score of 8.66, which having been running staff sentiment surveys probably for about um, 16, 17, 18 years, that was the highest score I've ever seen. And it really brought it home to me how how really highly motivated and um, committed and passionate and excited our leadership here is about the progress we're making. But particularly, I caught up with Matt afterwards and, and Matt was telling me his views about how it feels in the AGI space that uh, a lot of our technologies are progressing extremely well now and the conditions are feels like we, we could be on the brink of a major breakthrough. Um, so Matt, I'm going to go to you first, I think, and then over to Alexei. Does that work or would you prefer it the other way around, which works for you guys? It, it actually works either way for me. Um, uh, All right, let's, let's, it, let's start with you. And, and the reason uh, I say that, I was just making notes of um, kind of the, the bigger picture rather than concentrating on all the, the, the little pieces, is because of everybody who already talked and everybody who's about to speak. Um, I, I keep bringing this up every time. It's really this, uh, it's a privilege to be working with such an incredible team. Um, you, you see all the individual pieces here and um, I get involved at various levels at various times with each of those individual pieces, um, essentially trying to coordinate. And th this is this goes to the discussion that um, you just mentioned, Janet, of how to create emergent phenomena that just phenomena that automatically emerge from the conditions um, that we create. Um, and uh, to go to it, I, I you know, I, I was listening to basically all of the, the other speakers. Uh, I've, and to go into maybe a little more detail without just doing a list, I've been trying to work with Debbie on uh, clarifying how the AI works there in terms of writing it up for a book chapter. Um, and then uh, Cloris, uh, I've been working with the, the team, particularly Nate, who does a lot of the financial modeling, um, just trying to um, work together and, and bring my ideas and then he has his ideas and then trying to understand how the whole system works as uh, together. Um, I've been really um, working quite a bit most recently. Uh, this came up in, in um, Diane's discussion of the exciting AGI conference uh, and, and Danny as well um, in, in Seattle next month. Um, yeah, it's, it looks like it's going to be the, the, the location looks very interesting, uh, to put it that way, for, for the conference uh, at the Crocodile. Um, and um, yeah, so 
AI DSL, bio AI. I, I, I don't want to go into all of uh, the details. I'm sure I'm missing something, but it's just trying to get all of these systems working together, integrated, humming along. And, and, and that's what's going on now. And then um, there was mention of the Singularius announcement. Um, just to give you some pre preview or some background, that was work that we were working on a while ago. And there, so you, there's a lot of exciting partnerships, ventures um, that we're working on. And, and then the partnership team can tell more in a few minutes under the surface that, that we're not quite ready to announce. So um, that's probably the big picture without, again, without trying to go into all the specific details. And then okay. working with the wonderful Haley on trying to dis into going all those details and then she manages to write things up and capture in a very expressible down to earth manner everything that i all the technical details so Thanks so much, Matt. That's beautiful. And Dr. Matt Clay, our Chief AI Officer, um, it's a privilege to work with you too. Um, you do such an amazing job right across the whole board. And and you're absolutely right when you say that um, that there's so much bubbling, bubbling has been bubbling under the surface that is now really strongly coming to fruition, like the Singularis partnerships and the number of partnerships and, and uh, a lot that we can't yet announce, but also technologically making really fantastic progress on, on our core technology and, and meta. So thank you, and that's beautiful. I'll make the, uh, the transition to the next one easier. Because right, I just, one of the things I did forget to mention, um, so we have started um, a broader discussion. Um, so Alexei's team working on Hyperon has um, completed at least some portion of the meta language. And uh, we are now having a bi-weekly um, I think I renamed the, the session a study group for those outside of the Hyperon team to basically understand how to begin implementing a lot of the, 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 the modules within classic open cog within the newer modern Hyperon framework. So Nil was starting to do this for PLN, probabilistic logic networks. So he's the furthest along in this direction. But also, since this is more open cog, it's also open to the entire open cog community, open source. So um, the study group, if you are interested, um, you can just um, con you have to contact me, Matt at SingularityNet. Dot io and I can add you to that broader discussion group to speed up and or to accelerate um, the transition from classic to hyperon. Thank you very much indeed. Let's let's accelerate uh, that transition and let's transition right across to Alexei then for an update on Meta and Hyperon and uh, perhaps touch on a little bit of the work which we've been doing on Sophia versus AI as well while you're at it, Alexei. We start with, with OpenCog Hyperon and AGI first, please. Uh, thanks, Janet. Uh, the, the result of our work, uh, the technical work uh, going on with uh, Meta, we are now fleshing out uh, both uh, 
some uh, design features uh, because there are uh, many possible ways uh, to have uh, the same functionality and uh, taking into account that uh, only one person is still working uh, uh, on the meta core implementation uh, the progress uh, is uh, uh, quite good uh, we are also uh, finalizing our work on uh, the uh, type uh, system uh, support uh, in meta there are still some tricky cases uh, uh, to uh, to be solved uh, uh, but uh, yeah we, we are covering um, systematically and exhaustively uh, covering uh, already implemented meta functionality uh, with uh, unit tests uh, and examples uh, so uh, newcomers uh, can uh, understand uh, uh, the language better and uh, indeed uh, thanks uh, Matt uh, for organizing this uh, meta discussion forum uh, because uh, uh, it's nice uh, to have uh, uh, other uh, developers and programmers uh, to start playing with uh, uh, the meta implementation. It uh, makes us uh, feeling that it is uh, really working. Uh, so uh, other people uh, can start uh, implementing uh, some uh, algorithms and uh, AI stuff uh, in it. Uh, there is, of course, uh, a long way to go. Uh, there are very uh, tricky things uh, to be implemented, uh, to be still implemented uh, in Meta, uh, like uh, as, uh, in interpreter control and uh, so on. Uh, uh, but uh, the progress uh, is uh, steady and uh, we are happy with uh, uh, what is uh, coming out uh, from this. Um, uh, we have some uh, uh, technical uh, progress uh, on uh, porting our uh, Minecraft agents uh, to the new uh, Minecraft mod, uh, which uh, supports uh, the latest versions of Minecraft. Uh, so uh, there is some progress uh, on this uh, uh, aspect as well. And uh, since uh, Janet uh, uh, asked uh, to cover some uh, AI stuff from uh, Sophia verse, uh, uh, here we go. So it's uh, not uh, precisely right now about uh, uh, AI, AGI and uh, Hyperon, although uh, there are actually uh, short-term, mid-term and uh, long-term components and uh, long-term uh, uh, is uh, more like R&D with uh, quite uh, ambitious goals like uh, making a, a really sentient uh, Sophia uh, multi-agent uh, personality which uh, collaborates uh, with humans and uh, uh, grows up with them and so on. Uh, on the short-term side, uh, uh, we are using uh, uh, the tools which are already implemented, uh, both from uh, Hanson Robotics and uh, Safia Labs. Uh, uh, side uh, and uh, singularity net side as well because uh, uh, we are porting uh, Sophia personality uh, to our dialogue system uh, which uh, was uh, implemented uh, in uh, our labs uh, and designed by us. Uh, uh, it uh, contains uh, both uh, uh, goal-oriented, uh, more symbolic-like uh, components and uh, uh, different neural networks uh, gathered together in a conversational AI gateway developed uh, by the Sergei uh, Sharapin team. Uh, and uh, uh, the idea is uh, to have uh, this uh, Sophia personality uh, in the metaverse uh, to be able to uh, talk to people, to guide them uh, through different uh, uh, processes like uh, uh, NFT uh, stuff, uh, creating and uh, purchasing NFTs and so on, and uh, both uh, by more game-like or uh, interactive uh, storytelling uh, uh, components. And uh, what is interesting, uh, we see some uh, 
possibility to connect uh, this uh, short-term uh, and uh, long-term uh, components uh, by the mid-term component, which uh, supposes that uh, uh, we will create a module uh, which will be a sort of a brain lob uh, uh, attached uh, to the currently already implemented uh, dialogue systems, uh, but uh, which uh, will be able uh, to do something which uh, uh, any other currently existing uh, system is not too capable of uh, doing. Uh, we have uh, analyzed uh, the current uh, state of the art uh, in the dialogue systems and uh, uh, see some uh, critical uh, problems uh, with them, which uh, we hope uh, to somehow mitigate uh, in uh, uh, in this uh, midterm uh, solution. Uh, so it's uh, most uh, uh, typically related to uh, knowledge uh, usage uh, bosses uh, in self-knowledge, uh, uh, background story and uh, common sense knowledge and also uh, the capability of uh, remembering and being influenced uh, by uh, what uh, user says uh, in a, a not just local context, uh, but uh, in a more broad uh, context. And uh, uh, we are considering uh, uh, quite uh, novel ideas, uh, both uh, in uh, uh, more neural symbolic with a symbolic centered uh, uh, accent um, approach. Uh, uh, I, I, I hope we will be able uh, to say uh, something new in a month or so uh, on this. Uh, I will not. Uh, uh, I will not try to spoil what. Uh, can be done here. Uh, and uh, another approach is uh, based on a more uh, neural centric uh, way, uh, but uh, we are considering uh, with uh, Sergei Shalapin a uh, possibility to add long term rewritable memory to transformers and uh, experiment with this. It's still uh, quite uh, RD, uh, so it's difficult to say if. Uh, uh, there will be a great success or just uh, a modest success, uh, but uh, uh, at least uh, on the level of ideas, everything uh, seems uh, uh, quite plausible. So I hope that uh, the next uh, update in uh, uh, September, I guess, uh, will contain some interesting uh, news uh, from this side. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much, Alexei. And but when I think back, it was it was around about this time last year, wasn't it, that we were talking about it, it, it was May, June that we decided to build our own functional programming language for AGI. And there was a long debate about whether we would or wouldn't, because building a language can take can take many years. And it's it's really um, heartwarming and encouraging and very, very positive to see here we are only a year later. I know we made some design decisions August, September last year about the meta language. And it was the kind of thing which I, in the back of my head, had sort of filed as likely to be delayed by one to two years <laughs> um, because it's it's such a, a major undertaking. But actually to see us here one year later with a with a working language that we're able to to work with people. And and for you to say we're on track, you know, for something as as um, experimental and hugely impactful as our AGI programming language. You know, that's that's um, just fantastic news for SingularityNet and for our community and for our token holders. Well, yes, uh, although I have to say that uh, it's uh, still an experimental uh, implementation, uh, so it's not uh, uh, precisely uh, product level uh, uh, version of the language, uh, uh, and uh, it uh, it's a long path to, towards uh, uh, this uh, product level uh, design uh, implementation. Uh, and uh, th there is also another aspect uh, to uh, Hyperon. It's uh, the distributed atom space, uh, which. Uh, uh, I hope uh, Matt uh, can uh, talk more if uh, Andrea is uh, still here. 
uh, he can mention uh, if uh, we have uh, this uh, uh, distributed uh, atom space uh, uh, used uh, in uh, meta then uh, we will be maybe a uh, step forward uh, towards uh, this uh, uh, product level uh, but in any case yes we at least uh, can uh, Yeah, experiment uh, with uh, this language and uh, try implementing uh, uh, different uh, interesting uh, things uh, with uh, its usage. Brilliant, thank you. Always, uh, always accurate uh, in your updates and always brilliant updates. Thank you. Um, Andre or Matt, do you want to say anything about the distributed atom space progress there? Yeah, hi, um, actually, <laughs> hi. Actually, we are, we are preparing a, a report on early results we have in early testing. The report will be available probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So I suppose this is uh, an interesting subject for our next meeting. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Well, great that the report is still coming out and great to see you. Have you met the community on one of our pod leader updates before? Or is this your first time no, saying hi to not. everyone? This is You're my not. first time. Hi, everyone. All right, all right. Um, Matt, would you please introduce Andre? You've worked with him a lot longer than I have. Off mute. Actually, we go back long time to the 1990s yeah um so andre senna uh been working since then and i when when singularity net was formed and i saw andre uh at one of our first meeting or sort of the first meeting i can't remember i wasn't on board yet but i was like just so excited to, to see um, just because of his incredible um, brilliance and um, in computer science writ large. So um, data structures. Um, so yeah, no, I, my heart soared, let me put it that way. Um, And um, yeah, he's uh, head of the Brazil team and working on the distributed atom space. Um, That's plenty. That's plenty. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's a great, great pleasure to work with with you, Andre, and uh, and and the the talent that you've been building and, and working with in Brazil. So thank you, uh, Janet, and, and, and thank and, you, Matt. Uh, I must say that I, I felt exactly the same, Matt, when I, when I saw you are in Net as well. And, and the uh, I'm excited to read the the report. So, all right. Okay. So tomorrow. We... <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Fantastic. So we'll start there in September. So in September we're going to have a big update on distributed app of space and AGI and Hyperon. So uh, we'll we'll start there. I I can't wait already. But let's not wish our lives away. Right, so we have got only 50 minutes left. We're going to have to speed up. Where are you taking us next, Jan? Well, uh, Robert just uh, uh, visited us. And yeah, I think it would be a perfect uh, bridge to go from AGI to true AGI. Thank you very much. And Robert, we're down to three minutes of slot now, please, if I may I please ask you to be brief. Sure, I will. Sorry. Thank My you. Oh, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Just... Just... <laughs> we, we, we can have five. You can have five. Okay. Three I'll try five. to do it shorter than that. So, yeah, we, we obviously, I, I, I missed uh, the AGI brief, but uh, the update, but we've got some exciting news, I guess, to kind of share in terms of how we're supporting the, the, the great demos that are going on in the future for AGI. We are, we have been working and making some progress on the software stack for the, uh, both AGI as a service and the R&D portion. So we've been working on a set of requirements for the MVPs, the continued R&D, and the production-ready uh, products that'll be coming out in a, in a couple of years. So those three things have sort of a different software stack to them. So we've been working on the requirements 
uh, the runtime requirements for each of those pieces that fees AGI as a service. So that's that's kind of one thing on the on the technical side. On the other side, and this is in connection with Matt. So Matt's thanks for for all the help that you've been uh, providing me on to Phonify and all the to Phonify uh, and all the other stuff. But we have been working, as like I said in the past, on the connection between consciousness and the requirements and the goals for AGI. So we've been we've been trying to to nail down sort of how a path to get from the basically the four established theories of consciousness and how that relies or relates to intelligence and how we want to continue the growth of general intelligence, the model we're working on with, which is Hyperon. So we've been trying to tackle it in a couple different fronts. One of them, and I'll just go through this brief and then that's it. That's this is the last piece I have is in terms of what is, is it is it really needed just a basic the basic question is consciousness needed to get to intelligence and then how do how does that affect the goals and requirements for hyperon and agi as a service so from a requirement side and also maybe more importantly is the measure so how, how do we measure intelligence in terms of these things and tononi five being being one of one of the uh the approaches that we may take but there's a bunch out there and and we realize that and we're trying to figure out basically do we take a conglomerate of the ones that are out there and and produce our own or do we take things like you know from the root of Tononi Phi and things like that and and try to use the existing measures uh, out there to try and look at our roadmap look at our R&D plan and then put these gates in place so that we can establish what the progress is as we as we continue through the MVP process. So that's just a quick couple of updates that I had. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Um, and Good. lots of exciting progress there. Uh, Robert, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Right, Jan, where are we going? Ram, Anand and Sridhar for a platform and engineering update. However you want to split it, guys. Hi, Anand. Lovely to see you. Hi, thank you. I don't know if Ram is sharing this. Okay, uh, no, good on. Okay. Right, thank you. Uh, uh, you know, we're super excited to talk about the loyalty airdrop. You know that is coming uh, on your way, and uh, you know this is again to reward our token holders. Uh, the twist here is that uh, you know you're going to be getting your rewards, uh, the AJAX rewards on your card on a blockchain, right? Uh, the interesting piece here is that we have reused the frameworks that we have built in the past and, you know, we've also tried to keep it a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, blockchain agnostic so that, you know, tomorrow if we have future blockchains to support, uh, you know, the platform, you know, the design just uh, scales up, right? So that's a very interesting uh, piece uh, that we're working through and hopefully through the end of uh, this month, we would, uh, you know, have significant updates and it will be in like a really solid form, you know, where we can be production go live. Uh, the second uh, point I wanted to update is our discussions uh, have started with uh, the UI UX team, with Greg's team on the uh, on the training model uh, part. Uh, you know, there's a lot of work, and this is something that a lot of AI developers have been asking in terms of how can we support training on the platform. So the core pieces are in, especially in terms of what we have done with the daemon. You know, which which is the heart of uh, the entire training platform out here, uh, and then slowly we'll start also be building our SDKs, uh, you know, so that uh, people can use the SDKs, uh, and you know, the training is also supported uh, in a more broader uh, sense of what we can offer from a platform perspective. Uh, we have, uh, you know, most of you have probably heard of uh, the Wassel Hard Fork, which is happening on the Cardano side. So, you know, we're also upgrading uh, uh, it, uh, our Cardano nodes and uh, the, the Cardano CLI that we have been using are also going to be upgraded. Uh, this uh, has a direct uh, bearing in a good way in terms of what we've been doing for the Converter Bridge and also with the NAMI wallet integration, you know, that we have been uh, wanting to do for quite some time since we have launched the Cardano Converter Bridge out here. Uh, a lot of efforts, uh, you know, through the rest of this year and early quarter next year, is going to be focused on, uh, you know, integrating the platform with the Cardano blockchain, uh, you know, especially with aspects of staking and then, you know, supporting the entire marketplace, publisher portal, and pretty much uh, every component that you can think of in the platform is also, uh, you know, going to be ready for the Cardano blockchain. Uh, so that's that's been our core focus. Uh, I'm sure that you want to add anything. So. 
the most of them are covered on thanks okay yeah you covered thank you yeah, yeah and uh, go ahead go ahead and yeah last uh, last but not the least but you know all all this amazing work is happening because of uh, the fantastic team that we have and our platform you know we're very proud to work with my team and you know we have kartik prashant rajiv sham vinay and ananya i just wanted to quickly you know give a shout out to their names because you know this is going to be public information and people should know about you know the real uh, hard work and heavy lifting done by these folks out here so i think that's pretty much it no Thanks Anand that uh, you give such a uh, well structured and uh, confident update every month so thank you very much for that that's that's really helpful really easy to follow and lots and lots of really great work and really great progress going on as always uh, from the platform team um shreed or anything to add on the blockchain side yes uh, definitely so as we as we heard from all the project teams right the great uh, updates from them so behind the scenes uh, the lot of blockchain work is going on so for example uh, from the reju side so we refactored uh, some of our contracts to simplify the the adoption of the the contracts uh not just by the crypto users also by the non crypto users and now we are in the in the phase of designing uh, the the sharding concept and also the implementation of it so that's uh, that's ongoing activity i hope we will have the good update by next uh, pod meeting updates and from the mindplex side we are looking at uh, having an nft uh, integration into the overall platform and bringing the nft towards the referrals and it is very good way of leveraging the nft and uh, promising those referrals will be available whoever refer the, the mindplex uh, platform so the design has been completed and just uh, morning i completed the review of those uh, contracts as well so it's very interesting concept that we are applying now and to the overall mindplex uh, the the list of contracts that we have implemented so far there's a great addition to it and from jam galaxy perspective we are working very closely with sergey so we had very interesting meetings uh, on on debating what type of features that will be available on the overall platform and we shortlisted uh, the couple of features that can be part of mvp and then the team is uh, very focused on identifying those features and then uh, we are also looking at having uh, a kind of uh, the nft ticketing on the on the on the marketplace we are looking all possible options but we are in the phase of now picking up which feature to be available in the in the mvp so that's going on so the great collaboration between the various teams together here to to bring those uh, features uh, so that's a quick update from the from the blockchain team brilliant thanks so much indeed trader and always um uh, always very excellent work from you and your team and uh, everything it runs smoothly and runs well with you and your team so uh, thanks for that update i know how hard you're all working thank you. right thank you right uh, where next yan is it partnerships edwin i think so hello edwin you've been you've been playing a blinder and cooking up a storm of partnerships we've had a number of recent announcements and i can think of three that we're currently just putting the finishing touches to uh, tell us tell us what's what's hot right now in partnerships yeah it's great to see um a number of exciting partnerships have just been announced um including lda capital uh we've got sway minswap and mosen um so mosen being our latest announcement so singularity net have joined hands to um you know harness the capability of ai and machine learning um in aml and network analysis and together we'll be bringing um leading expertise and tools to benefit financial uh, institutions globally in fin- uh, fighting uh, financial crime so that's super can exciting I- um can, can 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 I just jump in there as well and say I'm really thrilled and excited to be working with Mosen. It got announced when I was on the road with Jam Galaxy and um I haven't had an opportunity to to speak much or or amplify it a lot. But this is a really exciting partnership with a um NLP AI and anti-money laundering firm based in Saudi Arabia. 
strengthening our presence in the Middle East, which is which is such a, a strong place for AI and technology, generally speaking, at the moment. And it brings together my my background as global head of conduct at HSBC Commercial Bank, and and also running a number of anti money laundering uh, projects myself in my banking days. So it brings that it brings that knowledge of mine and that background of mine in in AML together with Matt and Ben's experience in network analysis and um, together. <coughs> I know we're going to have some really great clients, some fintech clients, probably some traditional banking clients, and develop some exciting tools. But it, it's a subject that's very close to my heart because because financial crime needs to be, you know, lives. Financial crime costs lives and creates misery. And anything that we can do to bring better tools to keep the world and make the world a safer place will be great. But the Mosin team are um, a, a very inspiring and a very impressive team and we're thrilled to be working with them and we also have a second anti-money laundering financial crime partnership that we're uh, just currently working on the pr for that uh, will be complementary to to that particular partnership and of course while developing great ai great tools for singularity net uh, these are also really strong commercial partnerships for us as well. So strengthening our commercial partnership, um, our commercial partnerships. Now, speaking of commercial partnerships, I also want to touch on Singularius, which whilst we're still working on press release for that and, and approval for that, it has, has, as referred to earlier by Haley, been announced in Euronews uh, in a brilliant SciTech report in Dubai on robotics by Chris Roberts. Chris is also CEO of Altasan, which is a state-backed property management firm in the UAE. And we have got uh, really strong support from a number of major partners in the UAE, not least of which, of course, Aris Holdings, who is our major partner for this venture. The Conscious City, as Matt says, uh, we've been working on that for some time. It's true. It's a concept that we developed together, myself, Matt, Jan, Sergey, probably, um, I can't remember who else was involved in that, but but we've been working on it probably for about a year. Something like a major smart city project is, you know, it's a it's a multi-billion dollar investment and a, a, a you know a multi-year development. So it takes time to get off the ground, it takes time to get approval, it takes time to get the land, it takes time to put together all of the financing. But from an AI perspective, we're really excited about how about the sheer breadth of the suite of artificial intelligence uh, products and and models which we'll be putting together right across the whole AI conscious city with social robots as host to the city and, and uh, underpinned by our Hyperon platform to enable multiple AIs to work together and bring together a more holistic sense of intelligence to the city to really enhance the lives of the residents in a way that today's smart city doesn't quite achieve. And of course, our partnership with Cardano will be really important uh, for homomorphic encryption and, and with blockchain as the infrastructure underlying the conscious city. So over the coming months, there'll be lots more news about the Conscious City and Singularis, but uh, we're very pleased to have announced that one as well. And um, loving loving the partners that we're working with. Yeah, very exciting. Um, yeah, we've also recently signed a number of uh, partnerships in which we're currently working on um, PR and marketing efforts. Um, so yeah, also you'll be hearing about um, those very soon. Um, that will be in the metaverse space, um, advanced computing systems, and we've signed with two trading platforms. So we're working them um, with them in various areas and one in biotechnologies. Um, quite a lot of deals in late stage, um, which, you know, again, super excited about. Uh, just working out exactly how the relationship will look. And, you know, some of these are already in an NDA stage, which is always a, uh, a great sign. Um, so, yeah. Out of these, there's a consultancy firm, as big as it gets, uh, to be honest, uh, in blockchain, um, sustainability, music in the metaverse, which is a hugely exciting one. And um, yeah, Web3, social media and, and uh, agri-tech as well. So yeah, very active pipeline, incredibly busy. Um, and some of these relationships are, yeah, starting to, to come along quite nicely. So um, 
you know, it's, a, it's also a great mix of technical and creative briefs. Um, so yeah, never a dull moment here in, in partnerships for sure. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Edwin. Right, that is us officially out of time now. So who have we got left deep? Uh, Jan, would you like to give us a update on, on deep since our last uh, recorded pod meeting, which was probably only two or three weeks ago? Yes, well, I, I like to think that I'm in touch with the community all the time. So there's not that uh, much really new stuff that hasn't been out there yet. Um, but for those that prefer watching these videos, um, yeah, what is the major thing over the last uh, couple of weeks is that we did a series of uh, three series of YouTube uh, recordings where each of the awarded teams uh, all 12 projects and 10 teams uh, presented themselves and to be honest i had great fun there i thought it was wonderful and what was most wonderful about it is to see the huge variation and diversity of these teams in, in the kind of topics that they were addressing and some are really hardcore uh, ai and machine learning and science that to be honest are sometimes hard to follow for a simple guy like i am and others are really front end related and total solutions and about music and, and 3D environments and um, sign language and education and marketing and robot swarms uh, being controlled. So yeah, it's, it's hugely exciting. And, and I think it's, a, it's an amazing start of, uh, of deep funding that we're having there. And um, yeah, two other things to wrap it up. Um, I wrote a three part series on the first voting round with an in depth analysis and also with a view on with that analysis, what our next steps should be and, and what should be coming uh, next and what we should focus on. Um, and I'm working with a community in a governance group and everybody who's listening here is very much welcome to join those groups preferably on uh, discord if you're able uh, if you just want to tune in and there's also always uh, telegram and deep funding and uh, within with that community group we have a number of uh, topics lined up we go from topic to topic to get feedback and to discuss together uh, yeah which way we should uh, evolve with deep funding so everybody's welcome there so that's it for me i'm not sure uh Jenna, fantastic if well, we well have an hr update uh, today i think i i, I is there anything very brief uh renata you'd like to share or is renata gone renata's possibly gone um, oh, i am here <laughs> hi renata hi renata hello everyone how are you yeah, it's in a try to be very quick. Um, we have been working very close with the team leaders and supporting them in HR overall demands and trainings, allocations and everything we need to to run the department and the pod. Um, we also uh, are working on teams allocations and get every month the team allocated to the right project and courses and the uh, the managers that the the team leaders they were doing a brilliant job helping us with it i would like to thank you then uh, in general duties we are maintaining hr records and doing uh, handling any 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 queries that come from the contractors and uh, always working on uh, people's motivation and engagement. Uh, for recruitment, we have at the moment uh, three open positions for Singularity Net, that is blockchain developer, Rust developer and editor assistant. I don't have job spec yet, job descripti description <laughs> yet for Rust developer and editor assistant, but this general position, if you would like to apply for, just follow the, the standard the, uh, recruitment process that is sending one email to recruitment at singularitynet.io. You also have the, this email linked to in your, your website. 
We have for SEDAM a data engineer position and NUNET pure in social media management, HR lead, and three interns. Uh, we had, have had three, 19 new hires across the ecosystem uh, during June. Uh, for Singularity Net, there were eight people, three, uh, two were transferred from Singularity Down. Uh, we hired six people for us down and three for NUNET. I, I know that there are NUNET and S down, they are in, in different uh, companies. However, we as a SNET, we support them to scale up their team. Um, I think that it is out for HR, unless you, Janet, has some questions. No, that's brilliant. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much for the update. Uh, one thing I would like to say from a HR perspective, it's 11th of July and at our last meeting, we didn't wish everybody a happy Pride Month for June. And certainly here in London, in the UK, it was a huge year for Pride and celebrating LGBTQIA or LGBTQ plus uh, people in our community. So I just wanted to say a slightly belated, very, very happy Pride month to uh, all of our community members and um, underline our commitment to diversity and inclusion here at Singularity Net. Uh, so one thing that uh, I would like us to cover before we go is of course progress with our most advanced, our very very first spin-off and our uh, super successful DeFi platform Singularity DAO. John, would you like to give us an update, please, on the Singularity DAO? Tell us what exciting things have been going on since the last recorded pod meeting. Yes, thanks. So my name is Robert Wills. I am the uh, the head of products uh, for Singularity DAO. Um, bring you the latest updates on Singularity DAO uh, from Portugal, where we are all um, currently at during a, during a small retreat that we have to brainstorm on the new plans for uh, the upcoming months. So. We are currently working uh, on AI. We are making very good progress. Uh, there are currently 11, 11 people working uh, working with us uh, on AI, um, and we're actually making very good progress with uh, with our trading bots and sentiment analysis. Um, and there has also been a lot of progress in the um, in the past month on uh, AI that optimizes stablecoin API. So that's almost uh, that's almost finished. Um, and the end product here is that we have one big dashboard where all the data is um, is being uh, is being shown for traders so that they can uh, can make the best trading choices because in the end there will always be traders who make the choices that the data is being provided to them by artificial intelligence. Um, next up is blockchain. Um, so we are finalizing the, um, the the latest smart contracts right so we have put in a lot of work on uh, on all the smart contracts that are um, current that we currently need for uh, for phase one so this includes um, actual minting and burning of LP tokens uh, for your dyna sets so that you actually hold um, LP tokens um, and you could do with those LP tokens what you want because then they're essentially uh, essentially yours. Um, we're also working on the smart contracts for DYDX, um, which is our new short and leverage uh, uh, dynaset, as well as the smart contracts for uh, the all new BSC dynaset, which we we're going to host uh, very shortly after the launch of uh, of the upcoming dynasets. Um, regarding front end, then. Um, as you might know, we um, we have been working very hard on uh, on the release of what we dub V2. So V2 is a complete overhaul front end and back end of our decentralized application. Um, a lot has optimized, and it will allow us to uh, develop uh, much easier um, and build components on the existing on the existing website, so that it's much easier and faster. To, uh, to develop, but with, of course, all the all the safety measures that we currently have uh, still in place, because safety is the uh, is the number one uh, the number one focus. Um, we will release a video 
on how the new DAP will uh, will look. Uh, I think very shortly. Uh, so I can't wait to see your reaction on uh, on how um, how you think that the uh, the DAP looks, and uh, can't wait to let everyone basically interact with uh, with our new application and and show to the world how it looks like. Um, finally, trading. So as I speak, the, the dino sets are paused. Um, I think we had some terrific trading, uh, some terrific trading results there. And we are now preparing to open up the DIN BTC and DIN E uh, dino set again, um, as well as the all new uh, DIN DYDX dino set which is a um, high risk, high reward uh, dino set, so to say. Um, it allows us to uh, short and leverage. Um, so that way we have more options um, in a bearish market. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, to release those. As soon as those three are, uh, are out in the world, we're gonna, um, we're gonna uh, release the, the all new dino set on the Binance Smart Chain. Um, as well as a DIN yield dino set, which is basically a dino set that um, consists of stable coins um, looking for the highest yield out there. So if you haven't already, please prep the word because the dino sets, they are coming. We are looking very, very, uh, very forward to, uh, to, to, to show them to you and present them to you. And uh, we can't wait for uh, for you to uh, to see them and try them out. So, so much uh, from the uh, Singularity DAO side. Thanks and uh, good luck. Thank you all. Right, thanks everybody. Uh, I think that's a wrap. Um, brilliant, thanks Rainer, thanks Jan. Thank you everybody so much. We'll have a pod meeting break next week, I think. And then um, maybe a hiatus, definitely a recording hiatus in August. So we won't be recording again. And we'll make it maybe third week in September that we record. Uh, or yeah, anyway, we'll work it out. But thank you all very much indeed. Much, much, much appreciated. And we get fantastic feedback on these sessions from the community. So it's super, super helpful. Well done, everybody, as Jan says. Thank you.